Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I'll cross the heart test deserts I'll travel near or far for your glory I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my King for your glory to see you, to behold you as my King, and Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry, I'm desperately waiting. Across the hottest deserts, I'll travel near or far for your glory, Lord. I would do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King. to see you, Lord, to behold you as my King. I want to be where you are. Gotta be where you are. I want to be where you are. I gotta be where you are. Tell him, say, I want to be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. We've gotta be where. have been speaking about the subject of giving and today I continue and I'm going to speak about the attitudes behind your giving. Last week we looked at the law that revolves around giving 
that makes it acceptable. And we read from Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. Offerings and giving, aside defining a very sacred relationship with God, honors God and provokes the benefit and the blessing of life. What does the Bible say about offerings and the law and the principles that regulate this sacred act? We have seen the offering of Cain rejected. We have seen the offering of Abel accepted and a great difference between the lives of these two people. We have seen the sobering and the grave judgment on Eli's children and Israel as they uh, abused and misused offerings. The word give is a command and not a suggestion. Giving is the divine requirement that allows you to enter into a desirable future. How you give and what you give will definitely determine the quality of life on this earth. You can determine your future by your giving attitude. Make your giving very deliberate, intentional, and very conscious, and see the results you create for yourself in your future. So the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. In our relationship with God, God allows us to make choices and he guarantees the result. Your choice actually determines the kind of results you, you, you will have. If you look at our relationship with God, he tells us to draw near to him and then he will draw near to us. The onus is placed on you to take the initiative. He says, if you honor me, I will honor you. Again, the onus is upon you. If you pray, I shall answer. The onus again is upon you. When you sow, you will reap. That is another initiative you must take. And now he says, when you give, he commands us to give because he places the onus upon you to determine the kind of relationship you have and the desirable future. I just want to chip this statement in. There are different types of giving. Giving to God, giving to governments, and giving to man. And what you give to determines the source of your returns. Giving, like all other commandments, it's an initiative and it is deliberate. And it's a conscious decision to create a desirable future. Giving is not an emotional response. Do not wait for somebody to compel you or force you. You may be instructed, but do it because it inures to your benefit. When you take the initiative, you connect to a source of life beyond just meeting a need on this earth. Because life flourishes with giving, and anything that stops giving stops living. Giving keeps you relevant and keeps you alive. Anything that stops giving becomes less useful, and eventually it is described as useless or less used and then discarded. What you want, you must give first to. Give off to show God's glory. Initiate and receive a benefit and receive a response of life. People give for different reasons. You will have to give as a duty to be a responsible person, to be able to look after your family and your children. You have to give as an investment to be able to obtain a return, either into your schooling or into your health or into something. And then finally, you have to learn to give also as a blessing to show appreciation and affection. The first law we have learned around giving revolves around the quantity. Give. You initiate the process, but you determine how much you want to give. So if you give sparingly and if you give little, then you get a commensurate result or return based on the quantity that you have given. The second law that I'm going to focus on today deals with the attitude and revolves around the quality of your giving, the person and the attitude behind the giving. So it is not just enough to give, but you also have to look at the quality of the gift and the person behind the giver. Remember, God loves a cheerful giver. So the Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 30, the second part, for with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Last week we spoke about the eight referring to what you gave and then also what you require. Today we are speaking about the quality or the measure of your giving. When we speak about the measure, we are speaking about both the quality and the attitude. What can you give and how do you give? 
Do you give insignificantly? Do you give meanly and stingily? Do you give hesitantly? Do you give grudgingly? Do you give delaying and postponing your giving and having an excuse never to give at the right time? Do you give amending and always reviewing what you have committed yourself to? Or do you give fragmented and piecemeal offering that in the long run, it doesn't benefit anybody? I want to read a scripture from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. Look at what it says. It says, withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is in the power of thine hand to do it, verse 28, say not to thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. So there's a time to give and there's an attitude to give with, especially when you can do it. Do not give hesitantly. Do not give murmuring. Do not give grudgingly. Learn to give when you have it and you can give it fully and meet an expectation in your life. When God teaches us how to give, he looks also at the attitude behind the giving. What he himself does is that he gives willingly, he gives quickly, he gives promptly, he gives without holding back, he gives liberally. Look for an opportunity and meet it promptly. Can you imagine if somebody was in the hospital and needed help from you and you gave it grudgingly or you gave it in piecemeal? You see, your giving may not eventually inure to the person's benefit. So the way you give, and the Bible says that with the same measure, with the same attitude you give, it will be given back to you. So what you face in life as you progress is not because somebody doesn't like you. It is based on your giving that you will meet as a consequence in your future. If you give promptly, if you give willingly, if you give cheerfully, you will reap the same measure, the same way you give, the same attitude you give, People will also give back to you quickly. They'll give back to you promptly. They'll give back to you freely and liberally. So when you are giving, one of the things you've got to analyze it. If it was being given back to you, how would you like to receive it? It is with that mindset that God is saying, with the same measure you give, it shall be. And that's a definite response. It shall be measured back to you. And so in your giving, the attitude must be right. I want to give quickly. I want to give willingly. I want to give cheerfully. I want to give liberally, I want to give generously, I want to give sacrificially, and I want to give my best. What does it mean? It means that with the same measure, with the same attitude, when I have a need, that attitude will be given back to me. So you may think you are doing it in an isolated situation, but it will eventually in your future return to you. What you give is like a seed you sow. You will face it in your future. As a country, as a people, as a church, as a family, we've got to work on how we give. We may be giving service, we may be giving our time, we will have to give our energy and our efforts. Let's do it according to the demands and the laws of God so that our future will be guaranteed according to the way we desire it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. But then he wants us not grudgingly, of necessity. Why? For God loveth a cheerful giver. Remember, giving is a divine requirement for a desirable future. How you give and what you give determines the quality of life you will have for yourself in the future. You can determine your future by your giving attitude. Make your giving deliberate and intentional and see the result you create for yourself. I pray and bless you with a spirit of giving that is pleasing to God that your giving will give you a fruit that you desire for a great future. Your future is going to be big. Your future is going to be better. Your future is going to be glorious and more global because of how you give today. Though your beginning may be small, yet your latter end shall be greatly increased. Shalom, peace, and life to you. In Jesus' name, amen.